What if I told you that this tactical crystal set is taking the internet by storm? What if I told you that the phrase, what if I told you, doesn't even make any sense? What if I told you that was a computer-generated voice? What if I told you that people are getting tired of watching idiotic commercials before they get to see their YouTube video? What if I told you, you need a nice hot cup of shut the hell up? What if I told you that this is a video about a modern radio laboratory's crystal radio set kit from 1978? In the December 1970 edition of Mechanics Illustrated, Len Buckwalter wrote an article on how to build the original crystal set. He listed modern radio laboratories as a source for the parts. He even listed the catalog numbers and the prices. So Elmer Osterhout, back at Modern Radio Laboratories, got so many requests for parts that he made up a kit. The Modern Radio Laboratories number 74, or the MI Original Radio Kit. This is what you got in the kit. A plywood base, pre-drilled, four wooden feet. Now these feet are supposed to be an inch high, but they're 15 sixteenths. What do you suppose happened to the other sixteenth? That was probably the width of Elmer's saw blade. <coughs> you got a variable capacitor to tune your stations. A knob for the capacitor, some fan stock clips, Some hardware, a piece of wire, a cat whisker, and a Fillmore mounted crystal detector stand. The price of the kit was five dollars, even though by 1986 the price had skyrocketed to six dollars. Now this kit's a little bit different from every other kit sold by MRL. All of the other crystal set kits come with a front panel all of the parts are mounted on the panel. No base. You can mount the panel to a base if you want. But they were actually made to slide into a cabinet like this MRL number 2A. In addition, it didn't come with a coil. You have to wind your own coil in an oatmeal box. So this kit went up for sale on eBay in 2024 for $50. Now, I thought that was a little overpriced. I didn't think anybody would have any interest in this other than myself. And the only reason I was interested in it was because I wanted a photo of it for my website. Now, the only thing I had to go on prior to this was this drawing in the catalog that was made by Elmer. And this much nicer drawing from the magazine article. and there's a link to the article underneath the video. So I wanted the kit so I could assemble it and take my picture. And then I realized that this Fillmore mounted crystal detector stand was still in the packaging from Fillmore, unopened. Now you can buy one of these today. You can go to xdoman.com and Lance Borden will sell you one for $80, eight zero. Elmer Osterhout sold these for 45 cents in 1970. That's Elmer Osterhout who is now rolling over in his grave. So if the auction's sitting at 50 and these are 80, these things aren't cheap either. If I could have gotten that auction for $50, I would have been ahead of the game by like another $50. But a couple other guys apparently had the same idea. I don't know if they were Modern Radio Lab fans or not, or if they were just after that detector. But I got into a bidding war, and I realized the only way that I could get my picture was to outbid everyone else. So I fought all of my adversaries, and I now own the kit. The variable capacitor and the kit came wrapped in newspaper. Now here's a clue here. MI. So Elmer didn't call it the number 74, and he didn't call it the original radio, or it would be marked... 74 or OR. He called it the MI, Mechanics Illustrated. The date on this newspaper is January the 27th, 1978. Now, Elmer lived in Garden Grove, California at the time, so this would be the Orange County Register. 
I've searched through the archives of the Orange County Register for obituaries for Elmer and Mabel, but I haven't been able to find one. Oh, look at that. There's MI on there again. Now, I can understand why there wouldn't be one for Elmer. When Elmer passed away, his only remaining relatives were two half-brothers and a half-sister. And they didn't live in Orange County or anywhere near Orange County, though they did live in California. I don't understand why there isn't one for Mabel, because Elmer would have put one in for Mabel. It could be in a different newspaper, and perhaps someday we'll find one. Here's the coil for our radio. I've already wound it on this Quaker Oats box. I added some glue to the bottom on the inside and the outside, and then I sprayed it with some clear lacquer to protect the cardboard from humidity. The coil has two windings. It has a 10-turn winding on the primary that goes between antenna and ground, and for tuning it has 35 turns. Now the original article by Len Buckwalter called for a coil that only has a single winding. Elmer added the second winding to make the radio more selective. Here are the instructions. The MI for Mechanics Illustrated Original Radio Crystal Set. Detail print number 74. Detail print 74 was the last publication made by Modern Radio Laboratories. Over here Elmer's written something but I, I can't make it out. First of all, there's a piece missing, and I don't know if that's attach, attach, sh shorts, screws, I don't know, Elmer's handwriting is hard to, to comprehend sometimes. Now this detailed print is now in three pieces, but they're readily available on the internet, so I just printed out a new one. Now we'll begin to assemble the radio. Step one is to take the coil wires and push them through the holes in the base. Okay, now we've got to glue the coil to the base. Now I've got a finish on this base, so I, I can't use Elmer's glue. I'm going to use some E6000. I'm going to use this weight to hold it down while it dries. Well, we'll wait about an hour for that to dry. I think it could use a little bit more weight. All right, well, we'll wait for that to dry, and then we'll continue building the radio. While we're waiting, let me show you my Elmer Osterhout inspired coil winding helper device. It's basically a block of wood, a piece of coat hanger, two party cups, and a spring clothespin that has a hole in it, and a wire nut to hold it all together. Now when Elmer sent this wire, he sent it in a big hank and it had kinks in it, and it would have been very difficult to use like this. 
So we've got our two party cups. One is longer than the other. The ends are closed off and there's a hole in the top of each one. Put your hank of wire on the first cup. Thread it through the coat hanger. Put the second cup through the coat hanger. Push the two together. Hold it in with the wire nut. And you take your wire and you put it through the hole in the clothespin. Now you need something to clamp this down to the table. And when you're winding your coil, you just pull the wire through the jaw of the clothespin. It takes all the kinks out and keeps tension on it. And there you go. Well, I think by now the glue ought to be dry. Next we'll mount the tuning capacitor. The tuning capacitor is screwed in from the bottom. And I think I know what Elmer wrote on Detail Print 74. The message actually says, watch for shorts from screws. And what he means by that is, if you put the screws in too far, they'll touch these plates and short out the capacitor. All the parts are mounted on the base. I followed Elmer's instructions to use soldering lugs, even though he didn't include any soldering lugs with the kit. The only thing I did differently was I put a lock washer under here, because this crystal detector is held in with a single screw, and it tends to swivel on that screw. Now, another thing Elmer said to do, I don't know why, he said, he said, be sure, be sure to cinch your nuts good. I don't, I don't know what that has to do with the radio, but I did it because he said to do it. <laughs> I'm having a lot of trouble concentrating. Uh, oh, man. Uh, uh, uh. Now we've got the set all wired up according to the instructions. Elmer said to solder the Fillmore cat whisker to the rod and then wrap the MRL fine cat whisker around it. Well, it works. It doesn't work very well. It works like a basic crystal radio. It picks up the one local station in this area, but it, it, it picks it up with a lot of volume in the headphones. The crystal's a little touchy. Uh, it's got some hot spots on it, but they're hard to catch. Now, you can't hear what I'm hearing in the headphones, so I'll connect it to this external amplifier. that dream kitchens are made of. If you're planning an investment like this in your home, where you buy is as important as what you buy. At National Appliance Warehouse, we're committed to delivering the superior buying experience you deserve. Our showroom features premium appliances of every major brand, including highly sought after Sub-Zero, Wolf & Co. Our team of gurus is well versed at guiding you as you navigate the same appliances you'd find in the most magnificent homes and kitchens of cooking enthusiasts. Well, it's a basic crystal radio, and it works like a basic crystal radio. It's one of those circuits that no matter where you live in the country, you'd be able to pick up something with it. I think in this area, it could use an antenna tuner. Now, when you ordered this, you got a 50-page catalog from Modern Radio Laboratories, and if something like this piqued your interest, you could order a much more sophisticated radio. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed building the radio. 
Check under the video for a link to the Mechanics Illustrated article to Detail Print 74 and to a web page that shows some information about Elmer Osterhout and the Modern Radiolabs catalog.